hopefully, uh, and see if there was any crumb of self-actualization, of self-awareness, if you will, at the fact that, yeah, people are calling you a groomer for hanging out with someone who was very high up in a cult that did do sex trafficking, where the cult leader actually uh, kids. So that one is really, really up. Uh, so uh, maybe you'll just recognize that uh, the groomer labeling maybe is, is not something you should just do flippantly, but uh, alas, there was, there was no lesson to be uh, learned here for James. This is going to be uh, a little trip down cult history. And uh, for some of you, you may not know this story. For others, you may be like, holy shit, it's related to this. But I'll start with this. Um, if you didn't know, over this weekend, there is a conference taking place called the Better Discourse 4. Uh, where the idea being uh, a whole bunch of people from different sides of the political spectrum will meet and convene to share some high-level ideas, uh, and uh, the best ideas will rise to the top. Uh, unfortunately, they usually uh, seem to pick a lot more right to very far-right figures uh, than they do other personalities, and uh, the selection of leftists isn't uh, too deep. I believe uh, Ben Burgess is, is one of the only ones you could really qualify either way here's the uh, the trailer because it's nightmare fuel Biggest names and race realism will convene to spread ideas. Oh, hi! So there'll be no nuance. Hey, okay, I stand corrected. SJW debates. There, I, I, I would I would say SJW debates is uh, probably uh, the 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 most positioned uh, in this one so far to to speak directly on on lefty issues. Slow come. So it's it's taking or it took place. Uh, there was some discourse uh, for better or for worse. You know, I don't know what slow come brought to the table, but uh, I'm sure there was a, a variety of opinions being exerted. Uh, and uh, now uh, photos have been appearing on the social medias uh, for all these kind of things. And uh, Mike Harlow, I suppose a right wing figure, posted this picture. Bunch of frenzies hanging out, palling around, going on a road trip. They uh, they went on a road trip together. And who's that in the back making that face like he just pooped himself? None other than James Lindsay, the OK Groomer expert. The one who loves to state that a cereal box, if it has pronouns on it, I'm not making that one up, I'll show it to you in a second, uh, that makes it a grooming cereal. So if the cereal box on the side says he, him, she, her, they, them, and then had a little blank, which pronouns are you underneath it, he grabbed a picture of that and then posted it saying it was a groomer cereal, which got almost 10,000 likes. So uh, James Lindsay uh, is uh, in this car with a whole bunch of people, frenzies, if you will. Now, the person to the left of Mike Harlow here happens to be Nikki Klein. Uh, Nikki Klein and Nikki Klein's official account, uh, checkmarked and all, posted a whole bunch of pictures of James Lindsay. Apparently, there was only room for the front seat for one of us. So there's James Lindsay, and looking once again like uh, the poo has settled and he's now just uh, accepting his reality. And uh, some other pictures. There was this one here. Uh, Nikki Klein posted the Breakfast Club reboot. Uh, there you are, everybody. Not sure if James Lindsay knows how to cross his arms. Not, or, or was this just you wanted to get everyone a free pass to the gun show? Was that it? Just had to use this opportunity to, to do that? Interesting. Anyways, recreating, of course, the famous poster of a show. Uh, sorry, a movie, rather, uh, that centers around a group of high school students that are rebelling against the authoritarianism or authority of their parents and teachers. That's what that movie is about. So here's their recreation of it there. 
Um, some pictures of the panels themselves. Oh, here's an interesting one. Nikki Klein says, I taught him everything he knows. And this, of course, is the James Lindsay special, where he likes to talk about how manspreading is apparently still a huge problem in society that people care about and talk about all the time. It's just not some ridiculous thing for the SJW cringe compilations of, what, 2005 to be concerned about. But, yeah, cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, and someone turned it into the actual poster itself. Well done. We got memes. We got memes. That's cool. That's cool. <sighs> Reposted it, my Carlo. Cool, cool. Uh, and that brings us, so oh, some Elon Musk stuff, that brings us pretty much to, uh, the front of it. Now, I want to pull up James Lindsay, uh, made a tweet yesterday that caught the attention of a few people. And here's where the story begins. James Lindsay says, I think it's hilarious that these idiots are calling me a groomer because I took a picture with somebody at an event desperate. Effective for weeding out dumbasses. And I was like, what's he referring to? Oh, uh, the picker with, with Nikki. Who is this Nikki? Nikki Klein. Nikki Klein is a Canadian actress known for her role as Callie Henderson on the sci-fi television series Battlestar Galactica. Cool, cool. She was also a member of Nexus or Nexium. Nexium, I think is what it was called. A multi-level marketing company and an American cult. Interesting. Well... Suppose now, better time than ever, to learn what exactly is this Nexium you speak of. Hypnotic brainwashing. Oh. Not the pain that's bad, it's the suffering that's bad. Skin branding. Oh. Celebrity groupies. What? Even murder. These are just some of the rumors surrounding the Nexium story. And at the center is ringleader Keith Ranieri. Whoa. People were constantly being manipulated. They were constantly being controlled. But how much of this is actually true? We give things meaning. Justice is something we earn. For the first time, former Nexium members speak out and expose the real truth behind the cult's disturbing tales of sex, slavery, and- Whoa, that's Alison Mack. Alison Mack is on the front, the actress and the sex cult. Alison Mack. The ex-wife of Nikki. Yeah. Yeah, Nikki was uh, was not exactly a small-time player in this monstrously huge cult. Tur turns out she was, she was married to one of the key figures. She was also in the DOS program, which I'm sure you'll learn a little bit about coming up very soon. Disturbing tales of sex, slavery, and torture. Not only that there's a person there in the moment, but somehow you you reach into their very essence and you you meet a unique individual. I don't know why that makes me want to cry. It's beautiful. Keith Ranieri, the leader of the little-known wellness cult, the world has now come to know as Nexium. I'm very devilish, and I, I think I'm probably the worst coach in the world because I, I'm just a demon. Ranieri may seem charming and harmless, but when he's arrested in Mexico on he June 19, 2019. Rumors of Keith Raniere's sinister intentions come to light. Now, if you haven't watched it, there's a TV show on the HBO called The Vow, which is an eight-part documentary series on this cult in question. And holy fuck, if you haven't gone down this rabbit hole before, the things you will see. It was basically a multi-level uh, marketing cult that had the worst parts of Scientology wrapped into it. And also there was, of course, all the sexual abuse, branding of its members, uh, human trafficking, a uh, little group known for the slave master dynamic that they were imposing, of course, all to make sure that the cult leader was getting a regular rotation of women uh, with whom he could have his way with. The leader of an Also, yes, for starvation. We can't forget about that because it turned out he had uh, a thing and his thing was uh, abnormally skinny women. So unfortunately, those who were in the inner inner circle, uh, part of the DOS group, uh, they actually were starving themselves uh, to achieve the perfect form in his eyes. Uh, a man who was also pretty much obsessed with eating junk food and not staying in shape and stuff. Sex cult has been arrested in Mexico. Keith Rainier is expected to face a judge in Texas today. He's charged yeah, it's with called federal the sex trafficking. One rumor? Supposedly, Ranieri could control his followers with just the sound of his voice. 
in interacting with you with the Tourette's, I was wondering how I was coming across. After a certain amount of time, I had overcome Tourette's syndrome. That was incredible. Investigative journalist Frank Parlato once worked for Nexium as their publicist, but was fired when he accused Ranieri of embezzling more than $90 million. Ranieri wanted to destroy me. It was either me or him. So I became a journalist. My goal was to expose Nexium. Frank has connections to many former Nexium members. Hey! <laughs> who have opened up to him about their experiences under Keith Ranieri's control. Nexium attorneys employed different private investigators to get information on individuals and said that it was perfectly legal. What was perfectly legal? Getting information on, on people. One individual claims that Keith Ranieri was a master hypnotist. Keith was very expert at subliminal suggestion, hypnosis, and very, very subtle techniques about psychology, indoctrination, influence, religion, and I think he really perfected this method. I'm gonna have you do something with your left hand, your right hand, and then I'm gonna ask you to do the hard thing. I, I do this, it's, and we, it's with a twisted sense of, of pleasure. We have a very unique, specific methodology to do this. What you really got as a student was something far different than what was promised. What the classes were were nothing more than a super sophisticated hypnotic induction program and the secret. Se so just an old fashioned grifter. Well, this one is actually a really wild story. He was apparently uh, in his own right, someone who had one of the highest rated IQs, take that for what it will, IQ is just like weird racist pseudoscience, but he was registered as having one of the world record highest IQs. He was supposedly uh, a genius pianist at a very young age, as well as like a whole bunch of other things. His whole shtick was that they have this thing where people come into it thinking that is going to be a improve your personal life and career career wellness seminar kind of thing you get in there and you spend a very large amount of money thousands and thousands of dollars to take this course and you realize very shortly into it that it seems initially like complete gobbledygook hogwash uh they do a lot of cult like things they all have to wear these uh like ribbon sashes around them that denote how high they are in terms of their tiers again very similar to scientology where you have uh different levels and thetans and all that kind of stuff for them it was these different tiers that they would give these like weird old medieval names to like i am now uh i am now a bishop or i a provost or whatever it was uh with like lines denoting how many scales they had gone up in each tier uh and they would do these things very similar to uh e-reading which is what scientology does where it was a combination of pseudoscience hypnotism and psychology all wrapped into one that would give people breakthroughs typically what they would do is it would tell someone to experience the worst kinds of stress and anxiety they possibly could. Whatever you have to do to manifest that in yourself. Imagine that right now. Think about it. Now make it worse. Increase it. Uh, get yourself to the point of almost having a panic attack. And now, what would the exact opposite of that feel like? Go! Now you feel that feeling. And now, increase that feeling. Yes. Is it bliss? Is it yes? And the person is like, yes. My god, I've never felt this before. It's like, yes. Now increase that feeling more and more. And now go back. And now go back. And this is worse than before. It's the worst anxiety you've ever had. Now you're experiencing Experiencing that and it's so horrible it's consuming you and now switch switch again and now it's the most incredible bliss that you've ever felt in your life and you're just engulfing in it and you feel angelic and incredible and back and forth back and forth and then after the session someone walks out of it being like i've never felt this way before ever i i, I didn't know any human being could do that and they were just talking to me it's it, it's it's as if he has like almost godlike powers i need i need to be a part of this and then you recruit so now you've got someone who thinks that this person is some kind of a deity or whatever. They've had a spiritual connection with them, a spiritual experience. And now it's time to exploit their labor. So now you're part of the workforce and I need you to recruit more people into Nexium. So why don't you bring in more people and I'll train you how to do it. I'll teach you all the tricks. I'll teach you all the, the kind of like, you know, I'm not going to call it hypnotism, but I'm going to teach you all the kind of like, let's say, mind expansion techniques that I've taught other people. And then you can recruit more people to join and then they can recruit more people to join and so forth and so forth. Eventually, they start recruiting a handful of... Um, celebrities so people who uh 
are in film. I think it starts either with the Smallville actor, uh, and then it moves on to a Battlestar Galactica uh, actor, and they start recruiting them. And just like in Scientology, how it was really, really good at um, recruiting people for a variety of, uh, you know, celebrities were really drawn to it for a handful of reasons. There was things and techniques that were taught to them that they could really relate to both them in the acting world and stuff. The same phenomenon starts happening. So you get all these, you know, quasi like C list celebrities starting to join who then amplify the whole thing. It then expands because they get some heiress uh, who's worth, uh, who inherited millions and millions of dollars to spend tons of money promoting this. And they start to expand in different divisions. So they've got one division where they claim uh, and they're making a documentary about how they can actually cure Tourette's with their techniques. No drugs, no nothing, no, we could, but our techniques alone can, can cure Tourette's. Uh, another division that's working specifically on team building actors. Like, and it just expands and grows uh, in, until it reaches the, such heights. One of the people who uh, was recruited and climbed the ranks really early on happened to be from Vancouver, where I'm from, Vancouver in Canada. Uh, and that expands Nexium to uh, Canada and also expands the branches. All while this is happening, unbeknownst to everyone either in the media or outside who is now in the very inner, inner circles, the leader of the entire thing has started a secret division which he calls DOS. And I'll explain what that stands for. And that secret division is the very horrifying part where he had a team of exclusively women who would be subservient to him, who would brand his name into their bodies. Some of them didn't even know it was his initials. They just thought it was like these weird symbols, but it actually was KR uh, when you looked at it flipped around like this um, and those people would be sexual slaves to him and they were required to recruit more sexual slaves for him uh, ghost dunk thank you suggestion was follow Keith Ranieri Keith obviously had an aura around him that was promoted by the people around him so that when you met him, you were already primed to experience him in a certain way. It's the same as if your friend says, oh my God, you aren't gonna believe this, the guru's gonna come and the guru's gonna lift himself off the chair and then you go to the meeting and all these people think the guru lifted himself off the chair and that's a very known psychological effect. It's not new and innovative, it's mostly NLP. NLP, or Neural Linguistic Programming, is a means of manipulating people without their informed consent. It's based on reading them, their body language, their breathing rhythm, the way in which they are most likely to be influenced by a certain way of painting a picture. That's the Battlestar Galactica. People Actor. get into roles and the roles are mutually reinforcing. As many narcissists do and as many cult leaders do and as many sociopaths do, he had the ability to read people and to tap into what spoke to them, and he could build that rapport, and it made him seem special. Even ask the question, is this... Is That's Grace Park, a different uh, Battlestar Galactica actress. NLP is also basically entirely made up. Well, the thing is, this is a little bit different than Scientology in that this is also, again, a multi-level marketing scheme, aka a pyramid scheme, wrapped up in the sex cult and all the other shit. So he was very, very good at not only convincing people that, you know, this was revolutionary, life-changing, transforming. If you watch The Vow, again, that HBO documentary, it, it's from the POV of his second-in-command, his, his quote-unquote, like, best friend, the only guy who he allowed in his inner circle or whatever, who eventually found out about the DOS section of it and, and the, the, the trafficking and all that kind of stuff and rebelled against him to try and free people who were uh, trapped, and that's what started the investigation. But he even explains it as to me i'm i'm someone who's like he's like i'm an atheist i'm totally science-based I, I i would not fall for something like scientology he never sold it as that he sold this whole thing it was almost as if he had unlocked all these secrets of the human mind and no one else had figured this out yet and he would do things on a regular basis that would both blow my mind and everyone else in the audience where people would come up to him with and the guy telling this he's like i used to have a problem where i had such acute anxiety when i would drive on the highway that it made me unable to do it he cured me of that and, and he's like, and I can't even fully explain it, but it was like when I was discussing things with him, he was just uh, manipulating the way I was thinking about this topic. And then eventually he was like, okay, and now tomorrow go and drive. And I came back the next day and it was gone. And immediately I was like, how did you do that? And then he was showing me all these things that he had charted out. Like, okay, so this is all the different states of the human consciousness. And this is how we do this. And, and he's like, and I felt genuinely like he unlocked the human mind and no one else knew about this. And I had to bring this to the world. We had this, like, we thought we were saving the world by spreading this kind of stuff this thing alive is this thing thinking okay. 
This was an incredibly fear-driven environment. I think if anybody ever studies this thing, they're gonna find that people were going for years with elevated stress hormones throughout the whole time. A lot of it was more of a control strategy, a way to have control over women. And I think for Keith, it's in his nature. He wants to catch the mouse, he wants to torture it, he wants to play with it, that kind of thing. So, was Keith Ranieri a master hypnotist? Turning for a second from that to someone else, friend of the show, I'm sure you're aware. Luminati has done a handful of videos. Uh, this one is very long. I'm just going to skip hey, to everybody. the uh, the worst parts. So, again, if you haven't been warned, content warning. But if you didn't know about this already, we need to get to it. Just got to find the part where... You talk about this. He got a hold of the story in December, speaking to the branding ritual with Sarah Edmondson, the former Nexium member mentioned earlier. Obviously, once the story was released, there were no more excuses. Their secrets were revealed, and Keith Rainier was arrested in late March 2018. Rainier obviously denied having done any wrong at first. His lawyer said everything was consensual. There are well-known groups of men who brand themselves, attorney Mark Agnafino said. A group of women do that, and suddenly they're victims. But when pressed about the branding, he replied, I'm not qualified to say what is normal. I understand these are Keith's lawyers. Obviously, they're going to say whatever they have to, but it's despicable for anyone, anyone, to consider branding acceptable. Just because these groups of men are doing it doesn't mean these Nexium women should have been subjected to it. Have they never heard of that phrase, just because everyone is jumping off a bridge doesn't mean you should? That kind of mindset is what gets us here in the first place. People blindly trusting others like Allison Mack and Rainier's celebrity clients to steer them in the right direction. The charges kept stacking up against Rainier, though, until they're almost too long to list. Prosecutors said Rainier had a stable of over 50 female slaves. They say he told his followers that men needed multiple sexual partners while women should be monogamous. Nancy Salzman, Keith Rainier's partner, said that Rainier had no knowledge of the Dominus Obsequius Sororium, a phrase which means master over slave women. A so that's what the DOS stands for, if you're wondering. Apparently, all the brandings and slave meetings were under her watch, as she explained. I was in one mode, Project Keith. My main priority was that Keith was okay. If you ask me, even during the trial, she was in that Project Keith mode because I don't believe for a second Keith wasn't aware of the abuse. At the very least, he was aware of the meetings. According to Salzman, the group would meet three times a week, with members required to pose for a naked group photo at the start of every meeting and send it to Rainier. We were supposed to be in uniform, all looking the same, and all fully frontally naked, Salzman testified. Rainier required the brand on the women to be on full display and they should all appear happy. If they weren't to his satisfaction, he would sometimes request a new photo. If our legs weren't spread enough, we'd have to spread our legs more. Cells. And by the way, the women in this inner circle, again, were required to reduce their calorie count to about 800 calories a day because his specific aesthetic, he wanted them to be incredibly, incredibly skinny. So imagine on top of everything else, the brainwashing, the branding, uh, the abuse, the torture, the rape. Uh, in addition to that, the just sense of complete disillusion and like you would just be so out of it at that point if you were this high up and a part of the the inner dos circle and said adding that the group members were aware that his preferences skewed towards up close vaginal pictures so salzman can somehow say oh the dos meetings were all me yet testify to this rainier was the one controlling these women including salzman herself that's no excuse whatsoever for her actions but he was the one at the top of this pyramid and understand here i'm not talking about the business fuck the business the mlm is the least of his crimes i'm talking about the pyramid shaped cult that was going on DOS members were also required to do penance for perceived misdeeds. Such penance included paddlings with a leather strap, which Rainier would occasionally supervise remotely via a conference call. He called in and wanted to make sure we were flicking the wrist hard enough, Salzman said. She testified that a fellow DOS member, Daniela Padilla, told her Rainier had once been violent towards her after accusing her of being in a prideful state. She had been on the floor and he had kicked her, Salzman recounted Padilla telling her. Rainier had also planned to build a dungeon in the basement of the sorority house, and Padilla purchased various BDSM sex toys for use during penance, as a sex toy company owner testified last week. Padilla had also planned to purchase a cage, though she canceled the order shortly after the inner workings of DOS were made public in the spring of 2017. Rainier also drafted a public statement defending the existence of DOS while simultaneously denying he had anything to do with it. The statement, which was read at trial, accused the media of shaming the women for engaging in consensual activities and spearheading a campaign against the rights of women and alternative lifestyles. At one point in the email, Rainier compared DOS members to authors of the Declaration of Independence. How can you clearly defend something you had no knowledge about? Clearly, so clearly, he knew. Nexium's operations were obviously suspended, and even with the offer of a $10 million bond on the table, Rainier sat in jail. Claire, too, was arrested for racketeering conspiracy, while Allison Mack and Rainier faced charges of sex trafficking, sex trafficking conspiracy, and forced labor conspiracy. But one story stood out above all the others through this hellish process. Those of you that are already familiar with Keith Rainier might already know about this, but to those of you who don't, well, I'm going to warn you that this is probably the most disturbing thing I've found. Here we go. So, uh, 
uh, another huge content warning is all I can really say because this is by and far, after everything you've heard, one of the worst things he's ever done. Against this man. Although this occurred in 1993 and was reported on by the Times Union in 2012, police ignored these reports until it was too late. A young woman named Rhiannon was just 12 years old when Rainier offered her free tutoring. Rhiannon says that he taught her how to hug back in 1993. But she explains that no, this wasn't limited to hugging. She says he taught her how to hug the way adults do, pelvis to pelvis. Kelvis Rainier took her virginity at the age of 12, before Rhiannon was even in middle school. The Times Union reported in 2012 that the girl liked being able to hang out with Rainier and the other women around him. She thought sex was just part of fitting in. They told me I was smart and took an interest in me. They let me spend every afternoon at their house, she said. It was exciting to be somewhere where people wanted me. I was perfect Horrifying. picking, insecure at the time. To have someone that mature and that well thought of to be interested in me, it was flattering. I was very young, inexperienced, overwhelmed, and out of my league. This video- Now, for, uh, I guess, uh, clarification and legal purposes, uh, none of this is directly being accused or, or being levied, or uh, Nikki has not even been charged with anything when it comes to all of this. Um, but I'm just trying to give all of you an understanding of what Nexium was, how horrifying it was, how horrifying the leader was, all that kind of stuff. <sighs> Klein was a member of Nexium, the multi-level marketing company and cult that engaged in sex trafficking, forced labor, and racketeering. It has been reported that Klein left Battlestar Galactica in 2008 to focus on being a full-time member of Nexium. Klein has denied the claim. Klein married American actress and Nexium member Allison Mack in 2017. The marriage was alleged to have been a sham to evade United States immigration laws and became public knowledge the following year during legal proceedings and conspir uh, conspiracy and racketeering charges related to Mack's involvement as one of the most senior leaders of Nexus or Nexium. Sorry. In December 2020, Mack filed for a divorce from. Klein. According to federal courts records of uh, Nexium founder Keith Rainier's 2019 trial, Klein was identified by a government witness to be part of Rainier's inner circle or first line masters in the secret group DOS. Klein was not charged as a co-conspirator uh, of any federal charges that were brought against Rainier, Mac, or any inner, city, uh, inner circle members. In a letter of support for Rainier, Klein said that she had been a sexual partner of Rainier's for over a decade. Rainier had fled the United States months earlier. Klein inadvertently revealed his location by posting an Instagram picture at a local beach the group had been planning a recommitment ceremony which would involve group sex prior to rainier's arrest um in july 2020 klein and the other nexium members launched an activist group we are as you so this is what she's doing post everything a movement in which a nightly dance was held outside the metro uh, metropolitan detention center in brooklyn where rainier was being housed to cheer up prisoners who were unable to see uh, or have visitors due to covid19 the movement faced backlash from the former Nexium member for using the hashtag Black Lives Matter hashtag on his social media and questioning why the movement only targeted the prison where Rainier is located and how it could serve as a possible attempt to recruit new members. In September 2020, one month before Rainier was sentenced to 120 years in prison, Klein spoke out in his defense in an interview with CBS News this morning. Footage of Klein was then used in season one of the HBO documentary series The Vow. Klein, Allison Mack, and other Nexium members were named as defendants in a civil lawsuit in federal court by 80 former Nexium members in January 2020. The law to charging Nexium an organization of being a pyramid scheme, exploiting its recruits, and conducting illegal human experiments, making it physically and psychologically difficult, and in some cases impossible, to leave the coercive community. Article. Nikki Klein defends Nexium's sex cult and leader. No. Second time. Uh, and leader Keith Rainier, and calls him her former partner for over a decade. And by the way, the reason I used Fox News and The Sun as sources was because I didn't want um, James Lindsay to be able to say, like, oh, what is this leftist publications? Yeah, this is slander. Nikki Klein is claiming she had a relationship with Nexium cult leader Keith Rainier for over a decade. The Canadian actress, best known for her appearance in Battlestar Galactica, made the allegation that she was disgraced Guru's partner in the newly unsealed court documents. In a letter to a federal judge ahead of the 60-year-old sentencing for running a master slave group within a New York organization, the 37-year-old claimed it was absurd to say it was created for Keith's ad partners. According to the documents obtained by Fox News, Klein wanted to get a record straight after being harassed by the media and the public at large due to false allegations against me. Uh, Kissy Bijolk, thank you very much. Appreciate it. I am now at a point where the decision to stay silent is no longer an option, practically and morally, and I sincerely hope my voice can contribute to a more humane consideration of a man I care for deeply, Klein wrote. Rainier was convicted in June 2019 on seven counts that included racketeering, racketeering conspiracy, wire fraud conspiracy, forced labor conspiracy, sex trafficking, sex trafficking conspiracy, and attempted sex trafficking. Klein was a former member of the self-help group and is married to Smallville actress and high-ranking Nexium member Allison Mack, who also pleaded guilty to racketeering charges in April 2019. People magazine had previously reported Nexium had a slave uh, sorority known as the DOS, which branded them uh, brainwashed female slaves with Rainier's initials and forced them to have sex with him. Uh, Catherine Oxenberg's daughter, India, told the outlet she was recruited to join the group by Mac. 
Um, I could have adamantly contested the allegations that DOS was created for Keith to have sex partners, Klein wrote. I find that this idea completely absurd and even offensive. As a woman and a partner of Keith's for over a decade, I have never known Keith want intimacy with someone who doesn't want it and his ridiculous notion to think that he could have gone to all this trouble for sex. I will always know that I am a better person for having known him and that even when it feels the whole world is against you, it is still possible to live a life of honor, compassion, and character. Prosecutor said to the testimony showed Rainier's used women known as masters to demand nude photos and other embarrassing secrets from slaves. In fact, we should probably go into how fucked up DOS actually was. In 2015, Rainier created a secret sub, uh, subgroup of Nexium called DOS, acronym Dominus Obsequious Sororium, dog Latin that loosely translates to Lord Master of the Obedient Female Companions or Master Owner of Slave Women. DOS operated within the level of slaves headed by masters. Slaves were expected to recruit slaves of their own, becoming masters themselves. Slaves owned service not only to their masters, but also the masters above them in the DOS pyramid. An estimated 150 women joined the DOS. Rainier was only was the only male in the DRS and sat at the top of the pyramid as the Grandmaster. DOS's first members in Rainier's inner circle include Allison Mack, Nikki Klein, and Lauren Salzman, all of whom were also his sexual partners. Rainier maintained command and control over the DOS members by collecting collateral from them and relied on his inner circle members to carry out his orders and build the DOS pyramid group. DOS masters recruited women by telling them that they were joining a women-only organization that would empower them and eradicate purported weaknesses in the Nexium curriculum taught uh, that were common to women. Rainier's status as the leader of the DOS was concealed from new members. Before joining DOS, women were required to provide collateral, which included highly damaging personal information, sexually explicit photos or videos, and rights to personal assets. After joining DOS, slaves were required to continue to grow new collateral every month. Slaves were then told the collateral would be uh, released if they left DOS or told anyone about DOS's existence. DOS masters directly or implicitly required their slaves to engage in sexual activity with Rainier. Rainier had a preference for exceptionally thin women, and DOS members were forced to adhere to extremely restrictive diets and document every food they ate. The extreme diet caused women to stop menstruating and their hair, hair fell out. While Rainier demanded that women would remain excruciatingly thin and claiming any, any extra weight on a woman disrupted his sexual energy, Rainier himself binged on junk food, uh, junk food, chowing down piles of potato chips, eating pizza around the clock, and cakes galore. DOS slaves were severely sleep deprived. They were forced to participate in readiness drills and subjected to corporal punishment. Slaves were required to provide services from their masters from running errands to cleaning their homes. Some women were branded in their pelvic areas using a cauterized pen uh, with Rainier's initials. The branding was performed by a Nexium member, Dr. Daniel Roberts, as Al uh, at Allison Mack's home. The DOS branding ritual followed a script created by Rainier. Slaves were required to be fully naked with the ceremonies filmed and used more collateral against the DOS slaves. In a recorded conversation between Mack and Rainier discussing the branding, Rainier told Mack uh, the person should probably be asked to be branded. They should probably say that before they're held down so it doesn't feel like they're being coerced. Only Rainier's inner circle knew that the brand were his initials. DOS slaves were told the brand was a symbol of the elements, but they were unaware that it was Rainier's initials. At Rainier's trial, prosecutors introduced a recording of a private meeting with the DOS Inner Circle members that Rainier had stated the monogram as it is right now is very directly related to my initials. The group looked or discussed how obscure the connection was to Rainier's initials from the DOS members. At Rainier's trial, a DOS slave testified that they were finally confronted. When they finally confronted Rainier, he told her that DOS was a walk in the park, saying, you guys have it so bad. You think you have it so bad, but this is nothing compared to the alternative subculture groups. Following his conviction, in an email to Nikki Klein, Rainier defended the uh, formation of DOS, stating, I believe the sorority is good, not just good, and even noble, but great, and vitally important for women and humanity, the missing part of our society, found in a secret group of women like this. Arches to be embraced, we should deeply mourn its possible loss. According to DOS members, Rainier had envisioned DOS grow to thousands of members, with DOS sorority being across the country. DOS members were encouraged to recruit people of power and influence into the group. Rainier wanted to get members involved with the government so they could spread the ideas that he taught and followed throughout society. Salzman testified at the trial that Rainier hoped that the DOS candidate at a high-level uh, political office and that the individuals would be highly collateralized. Okay, I'm going to turn off the screen for one sec to make sure I can scroll past some tos -E pictures in the other article in the sun. Here we are. Now, in a bombshell dismissal. In a bombshell first interview, fellow high-ranking member Klein has controversially revealed she still supports Rainier and the choices she had made, adding, We made bold choices. I accept that. I was part of a group that really tried to uphold accountability, discipline, honor, and trust amongst women, which is something I think is important and needed. I think there were misunderstandings and that things are still misunderstood. And obviously, I'm being careful with my words because it's a very sensitive situation, situation, and this is the first time I'm speaking about it. Right now, the most important thing is that the world knows that I am saying I am proud of who I am and the choices that I've made, and I believe that this was very 
positive for me. Klein 37, who has not been charged with any crime, was a first-line slave and master who recruited her own slaves in a secretive sorority at the heart of Nexium called DOS. The women at DOS had to make a lifelong vow to their master, provide explicit and damaging collateral, be at their leader's beck and call, and carry out readiness drills punishment whenever they asked. Then they were reportedly blindfolded and branded with cauterized iron in a secret ceremony, which many former members claim was terrifying and excruciating experience, and they were shocked when they realized they were branded with the initials AM and KR. Um... Responding to that, however, Klein remain, uh, sorry, however, Klein claims that she never saw or carried out any abuse, saying, I didn't participate in, and I don't in any way endorse any victimization of anyone else. I am adamantly opposed to any type of abuse to women or to any person of any oppressive environment. This was a positive and consensual choice. Klein admits that she was branded, but is adamant it was a very positive experience for her, which she does not regret. When asked if she knew that she was going to be branded with the initials KM and AM, KR and AM, she said, if I were a man, it would be completely irrelevant and offensive to be asking me a question like that this has to be one of the biggest like attempts at an uno reverse card using id poll that i've ever seen in my entire life trying to be like oh would you ask a man such a question uh would you ask a man if they were concerned about the fact that the cult leader had branded his initials into them yes i would i i would ask that to a man i absolutely would if it was a group of men who had been branded i would i would be like were you aware that those are the cult leader's initials before you got branded because that like what in the ever loving fuck Okay, and I think that that's the type of double standard that we need to examine as a society if women are going to be seen as equals. Interesting stuff. Um, where does this all go back to Mr. James Lindsay? Well, I firmly believe that James Lindsay being called a groomer for being friends with this person, going on a road trip with this person, posing for movie poster parodies with this person, and having this person tweet out for almost a full day about James Lindsay, uh, about how she had taught him everything he knows, still is no direct evidence that James Lindsay is himself a groomer. Again, grooming is directly coercing children into having a sexual relationship with you. But it is very rich. Of all people, James Lindsay, check this out. How many times does he use this word? Okay, groomer. Groomer books. Oh, here's a really good one. A list of pediatric gender clinics in 2007, a number of pediatric gender clinics in 2022, with their locations, and him stating groomer clinics. Hmm. Hopefully uh, nothing bad happens to any of the people who work at those clinics. Every single time someone says something, okay, groomer. Nobody will follow this groomer anywhere. Groomer, sco groomer, sco uh, sorry, groomer schools, Easter edition. Prioritizing the safety of children over the employment prospects of groomer adults for saying prioritize safety of queer kids over the discomfort of adults. Okay. Disney went full groomer. Groomer, groomer, groomer. Hilarious groomer. Who is this groomer? Groomer teachers. Groomer, groomer. Oh, even I got one. Oh, this one's recent. Okay, groomer. Nice. I, I got the okay groomer for doing this one. <laughs> and this, this brings me to my point, by the way. Me saying this, for the record, James, I don't think it's appropriate to call you a groomer for your friendship with her, but maybe reflect on the irony of people doing that, considering you're a person willing to call serial grooming just for using pronouns. And then, of course, there's only response. Groomer serial, he, him, she, her, they, them. So, yeah, I mean, I'm going to stay principled on the stance. I don't think people should falsely accuse other people of being groomers, even though James does it all the time. He did it today to me. Here's a direct example of it happening. So now the fact that people have been saying, hey, by the way, uh, James, uh, the fact that you're hanging out with this individual, uh, which is a massive holy fucking yikes, like holy shit. And uh, he's trying to downplay saying like it was just one picture. Uh, people are getting upset that I took one photo with someone at a conference. Uh, no, dog, you're lying about that one. Uh, you went on a road trip with her. And by the way, her official account is tweeting about you a lot. In fact, you're like one day's worth of tweets all about James Lindsay, including that uh, infamous photo now of the man spreading. So, shit. This one looks really bad. Really bad. On top of everything else, I gotta say, honestly... I don't think James Lindsay knew much about her or who she was before he got on board and bought the ticket. I think he went on a funzy little conservative road trip with a bunch of people and they were all like, hey, what are you What are you here for? What do you do? What do you talk about? And probably met her for the first time. That's just going to be my assumption. This is pure speculation. I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe they were friends outside of this. Oh, I also, I love that his response to this tweet. You can't manipulate me. <laughs> <laughs> were you were you laughing so much that you fell to the floor, sir? Were, were you like you can't manipulate me? 
knows? Uh, not, not trying to manipulate you, James. Trying to hopefully uh, see if there was any crumb of self-actualization, of self-awareness, if you will, at the fact that, yeah, people are calling you a groomer for hanging out with someone who was very high up in a cult that did do sex trafficking where the cult leader actually uh, fucked kids. So that one is really, really fucked up. Uh, so uh, maybe you'll just recognize that uh, the groomer labeling maybe is, is not something you should just do flippantly, but... Uh, alas, there was there was no lesson to be uh, learned here for James, but uh, yes, uh, therein lies the story of James Lindsay and uh, the unusual uh, association with uh, the Nexium cult. Yeah, there you have it. It is honestly to to learn about it just horrifying across the board. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, sorry, it's. Uh because of a situation th Agreed. like this that happened to you. Um, it, for those of you, how many people know what Nexium is? Have you heard about this cult that, uh, okay, a lot of people don't, oh. which I'm surprised, because it was a documentary, and now you have your documentary, which I think is really insightful. But explain what Nexium is to people if they don't know. Well, Nexium proposed themselves as a self-help organization, when really it was a criminal organization masking as personal growth. And Nexium was the umbrella company. Yeah. So there were a lot of little companies underneath that umbrella, and executive success programs was the one that we were introduced to. Right, EESP, which yes. I had heard about ESP. A lot of people were doing that, and, yeah. and I had no idea that it started with ESP. So yeah. that's how you first got involved, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Right, so you, you take her because you're both interested in spiritual growth. Actually, a trusted friend kept calling me and saying, this program is gonna change your life, and she was incredibly insistent. And what we didn't realize in retrospect, she was recruiting us. From someone you trusted, yes. and you thought, well, it's, and when you- Yes, Ellen is cringe. She's friends with George Bush and has terrible labeled practices. That's not, that's not why we're watching this. Well, they, she became a coach. I wasn't interested. And then at one point, I was handed an article. Getting out of a cult and onto Ellen. She seems like out of a frying pan into the fire. Ellen sucks, and her labor practices are uh, abhorrent. Uh, it's not the same as a sex cult. We have to differentiate um, those two things. Basically alleging that he was a pedophile. And I was, that was the moment that I was like, okay, I'm out of here. And I told her. And, but by that time, India's response was was that I was only having good experiences so right. far. So I didn't have anything to base it off of. Like these people had become my friends and I trusted them and they were kind of my authority figures at that point. I mean, I was 19 years old looking for direction and structure and I thought that this program was gonna give me that. And, yeah, and she said, if it was true, why is it there? She there was always a justification, everything was fake news. Right, nothing, nothing, you didn't see anything that made it seem like he was a pedophile. He wasn't there. I mean, no. that's one of the things that yeah. they do very well is right. they conceal yeah. all of the inner circle from anybody who's just a student. It's true. So right. Los Angeles was pretty removed from Albany. I mean, I didn't even know Albany at all right. before I went there. So Albany is where the whole thing yeah. happened. Yeah. And, and then it, it seems like he's not doing this to all these women, but he's doing this to all these women. And nobody knew that it was a lot of women that he, because they said he was like celibate, he wasn't having sex, but he was. And then part of it was they were branding, you, you were branded, mm -hmm. like with his initials. Yes, but we didn't know that. We didn't know that they were his initials. We were told that it was a symbol of the elements. And so that was just one of the many lies that we were told in the process of being recruited. I mean, the branding didn't happen right away. We're talking about five years, five of years of indoctrination. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a lot of programming to, to fight against. To allow yourself to even to get to that place where you're so brainwashed right. that you think it's okay to be branded. I mean, also sleep deprivation, yeah. food deprivation, enormous amount of stress and pressure, and a very rigorous lifestyle. So you don't have time to really question right. things. Plus the guy who became the biggest whistleblower on the whole thing, uh, Matt or Mark, I think his name was. He was basically the right hand man. Uh, I think he'd been in uh, the cult for almost a decade. That, that was almost 10 years of him following everything this guy said as some kind of a deity. And it took, obviously, multiple people coming forward who uh, were, you know, at one point or another to trust him uh, to, to finally explain the things that had been going on. And he eventually confronted the leader, saying, like, hey, by the way, I'm getting multiple people reporting on this and that. Uh, and he eventually was denying it. And eventually he was like, well, OK, well, there might be a little something to this. I can only give you sparse details, but it's probably just false accusation. Like, it just it was one of those things where, like, he, he did everything in his power to try and do something this horrifying and abhorrent and obviously manipulate all these people into doing this this practice while at the same time the people who were that deeply entrenched uh, had so much dirt on them that they were also scared of coming forward because that was part of the DOS procedure was that you would have to get all the dirt you could on anyone who joined so uh, they, they had uh, you know a whole bunch of private information about them uh, salacious photos uh, you know uh, things that could destroy them and their reputation and career anything to make sure that they never told anybody about it
If you questioned, you were punished. Yeah. So you don't really get very far with that. Right. It's it's crazy when you. I mean, this this is when you when you watch how it happens, it makes sense because they you, you. you're making friends and you're all like-minded people and you think that you're you know it, like you said you know bettering yourself. Yeah. Um, wh how did you? I have to admit, there's there's four of them, right? Yes. I, we watched three last night. <laughs> Portia and I just went through three, and we finally said we have to go to sleep. We yeah. can't. So um, you the fourth is obviously when you get out. What was it that you finally realized? Because he was arrested, he was out, and then you stayed in it. What yeah. made you finally leave? I mean, it wasn't just one moment. It was a series of truths that I needed to hear and also Everyone learn got from arrested. myself. I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, that was, that was that. But even before people were arrested, I was still in. Yeah, I, know. I mean, this was a very closed, controlled group. And on top of it, I was collateralized, basically being blackmailed. Yeah, so it right. didn't make leaving really an easy yeah, they option. they take all of your secrets. Yeah, just horrifying. So anyways, the lesson of all this, everybody, is maybe do research into, uh, you know, your new besties uh, before, of course, they start posting about you on social media. James Lindsay has retweeted some of her posts as well, so it's not as if it's just uh, her tweeting uh, and nothing coming back in the opposite direction. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, hopefully uh, James Lindsay will take a little time to reflect on who exactly is this individual, Nikki Klein, that uh, they're hanging out and being besties on. Do you enjoy the SERPs, but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs? Many are saying this. Well, we've got the solution for you. It's the Surf Times in podcast form, available on most major podcasting networks now. If you enjoy it, please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out, apparently, and it's free, just like the podcast. To our gods, Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Just, we are prepared to embark on a mighty jihad in your name. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are but your humble jester, attempting in vain to get you to laugh. To our valiant knights of the round table, Benji Arnie, Tech Tink, Scary Earth Human, Tony, DM Rivera, Resident Scarecrow, Sir Nickus, Mayred, Cheryl Alvarez, Ruby Kelly, Brandon, Words Greenwood, It doesn't matter what I believe, it only matters what I can prove. Hagbird Celine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Ariane McCarthy, Daniel Sutton, Coulter Smith, Jenna Tao, Quiet185, Anna Loves Riley, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, The Tim Caucus, Multimondi, Trevbot, EXE, Brian Ephraim, Lemmy101, Anthropophojack, Saren42, Catherine, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, Agent NDN, Violent Orchard, Political Puppy, La Media Panza, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We raise our mugs and salute our brave heroes off to another glorious conquest.